In Illustrator, I have these different layers that are now spaced and use the typefaces I think are most useful. This is all just the type as is. Any one of these layers I can select and I can use the large selection tool. And if I don't hold down shift, I can distort them. But for now, I don't want to do that. I want to keep their normal. But what I do want to do, like I did in Photoshop with the arc tool in the type, is I want to change them from being on a horizontal to being on a slightly curved angle. Now, this is a different way of doing it in Illustrator, which gives you more options in Photoshop. But I'm going to do it in a new layer. And I'm going to draw for the first time ever in this class an empty path, a path that doesn't have a stroke and doesn't have a fill. I'm going to use the pencil tool. And I'm going to turn off both the stroke and the fill. And I'm just going to draw the line underneath my text blocking. So you see, I drew a little arc there. Now, I'm going to click on the type tool to get the drop down. And instead of the usual type tool, I'm going to do the type on path tool. All of these are helpful for fitting type within different shapes, right? The type on path tool will mean that it will follow this curve exactly. I click on it, and then I go to the content I want to fit on that line, which is northeast. I have to unlock it. To select it, have to double click it with the type tool, hit Command C, then lock it. This is just how I organize an Illustrator. Then go to the type on path tool and paste it in. Okay, and now I can start shrinking it. So this first letter. It's not going to be 400 point anymore. What should it be? Probably, I just have to kind of guess, maybe 66. Nope, bigger than that. I want it to kind of fit with my blocking sketch. Let's try one, what did I do, 220? Let's try 180. And soon we'll just be able to outline these as vectors. Let's try 166. Let's try 146. That looks okay. Okay, now the rest I'm gonna do, let's say 120. And again, you can just type these values in. Luckily, when I type numbers in, it doesn't stop the recording. Oops. But it's going to preserve my kerning and everything else. We'll preserve my typeface. And I can always do it like I did it in Photoshop, just by pasting them. So this is a combination of two different typefaces. And you can see it's on the curve. Up, oh, let me double click on it. There we go. But if all of your type doesn't fit on that curve, you need to extend the path. So you use your pencil tool.
and I just draw it a little further. So it fits, but you see that little bobble? I don't want that bobble. So let me redraw that line. And this is what's great about Illustrator is you can customize the path you use, whether it's clean, whether it's wavy, as long as the letters can fit. That looks pretty good. Now I can use the large selection tool, kind of move it in place, and I can rotate it. And I can still play with the individual kerning and spacing, though that looks pretty good. So if, let's leave that for now. Now I can duplicate that because I have a very similar curve. So I copy it, make a new organizational layer, and then hit Command-V to paste it. Then with the large selection tool, I rotate it. Rotate it a little bit less. There we go. And I can change these letters using the Type on Path tool. So Type on Path is a unique feature of, of Illustrator. I'm going to delete these, do the V. So as I delete them, these big letters, when they can fit, are going to be in there. A little annoying. There's still a T in there somewhere. I think I want, yes, I want the, the thicker eyes. Come on. Thicker E and, oh, the thinner E and the thicker W. So let me extend with the pencil tool that path a little bit so it can fit all of those letters on. And now I can use the large selection tool. And not only can I rotate it, I can also start to shrink it and place it. And for my purposes, that's very, very helpful. Now that looks pretty good, except there's too much space around the V. And this is where it's really helpful to have it as a type tool still, because I can still play with the kerning using the option key and my arrow keys. Same thing here, I have to unlock it. But if I want a little bit more space around the T in Northeast, I can use these arrow keys and the option key and close that up. And it will still always follow the path. until we run out of space. Okay, let me see what this looks like from a distance. Yeah, that looks okay. Okay, lastly, college. This would be a good time to save my progress. So I saved this not overwriting my Spot Illustration Assignment 5 EPS, but instead Assignment 6 Black into my assignment six folder or just right onto your desktop to organize later.
So because I have different fonts now attached, in order to use typefaces in any program, you need to have the typeface loaded. So I'm embedding that into the program, but it's not gonna matter at the end because just like we outline strokes, we're going to outline all of our typefaces by the end. So you don't need the type program for the computer to read them. That's a little complicated, but hopefully it will make sense as we go. Okay, now looking at this, I see that the Northeast might benefit from being a little more curved. And it's simply a matter of just using the pencil tool for the type on path tool and redrawing it a little bit more curvy. But remember, I need to start on the path and end on the path. And then I can always use the smooth tool to even it out. There we go. That looks pretty good. And the large selection tool to move it around. And to place it. Now, is there any kerning I want to fix? Maybe a little bit more space around the E. And then while it's still a type tool, I can also just select this E and make it just it a little bit smaller. Take this, I think the T and the R work okay. But maybe increase the space a little bit between the O and the N. Maybe a little bit more in front of the S. And then of course you can use your arrow keys with the large selection tool and, and adjust everything. I'm noticing where the, the tower is going to overlap it. I'm trying to avoid any tangencies, uncomfortable touching. All right, that looks good. Now Lakeview, it's just making it all balance and, and look nice. I can always turn off my blocking sketch so I can see how it looks in black. Lakeview, I think I can curve a little bit differently. And this is all with the full control of the pencil tool. Just redrawing the, the path on which the type is following. Then using the large selection tool, the black arrow, to make big adjustments. This is often called typesetting because we're setting down the type and we have more options than just what's allowed here. Okay, and now just like with Northeast, I'm gonna play with the, the sizes a little bit. In this case, I wanna make the A a little bit bigger. The V a little bit smaller. And this last E and W a little bit smaller. Thinking of readability and just kind of personality. Now I can hit Command S and save that. Now for college, I can make that kind of funky in the same way. I'll review that. I'll show you two different ways. Because sometimes you want it really clean. So first I'll do the funky. I'll draw the line underneath with the pencil tool, trying to give myself plenty of space on each side this time, because I'm not always great about that, I guess. And now, what I've learned from the other times doing this, I'm gonna take the college, and I'm going to select